Okay, so here's the thing. I wasn't gonna vlog today and then I ended up just accidentally doing a winged liner and then I'm like, hell no, I'm not going to waste my winged liner face. Of course I'm gonna vlog, of course. Look at this wing. It's really not even or that great, but. <laughs> So today, again, started out at about 4.30 a.m. I woke up again, and then I went back to sleep till 6.30, then I worked for a few hours, got myself an avocado sandwich, and came back here to shower and get ready while Aaron finishes working. We were supposed to be on the road half an hour ago to go to the ruins today, but I guess he has more work to do, so I'm, I was just getting ready, and I had enough time to do this winged liner, so I did. Yeah, so I'm gonna take you on another day in Tulum with me and we'll see what kind of adventures we get up to. Little note about this outfit and stuff. So all these influencers and all these tourists on the beach, on the street where um, all the hotels are, they look fabulous. They always look so good. But when I leave this Airbnb, I'm gone for the whole day. Sometimes it starts raining. Sometimes we have to walk a lot. Sometimes I have to sit on sand. So I want to just be comfortable. So you know what? I don't care. Woo! I don't care if I don't look like an Instagram model, okay? I'm gonna be comfortable and I'm gonna enjoy my life because I'm not constantly fixing my boobs from falling out of my crop top. Sometimes I try. I really do value and cherish comfort over looks. So, I got my winged eyeliner though. Got these on. I have bathing suit underneath. I'm ready for the day. Let's go. Show you my altar that I'm creating over here in Tulum with my little pillows where I sit on meditation if Aaron and I do a rapé ceremony, that's rapé over there. It's a sacred tobacco thing. We'll sit right here and kind of just spray ourselves with some smudge spray, use some sage, light some incense, a candle, use some essential oils. Every morning I wake up, I sage myself. I light some incense. This is Kopal. It's good for cleansing your energy body and it also keeps away mosquitoes. I light this in honor of my spirit guides, in honor of God, in honor of my higher self. And then I light this candle over here in honor of my ancestors. Then I'll just sit and stare at that for a little bit and feel gratitude for the protection and guidance that I have every morning. And I do this every night as well, the exact same thing. I'll sometimes spray this smudge spray. I got this off of Etsy. And then I put some essential oil on my wrists. This is a blend that I got from the Den Meditation in West Hollywood. I'll hold my crystal and I will think of things that I want. I will imagine myself ha having them. So I always think of being happy. You know, I am a very happy person, but I always like to always just ask for happiness because when you ask for happiness, the universe sends you all the things in your life to make you and keep you happy. So I vision myself laughing more, being lighter in heart and spirit and just enjoying life. And if there's anything specific that I want, I will ask my ancestors respectfully and my guides to help me in achieving it. Whether it be super deep, like healing or help with somebody else's healing or some sort of decision I have to make. Or if it's something like, I hope that today's video does really well. I'll ask them for that as well. I then journal here and the way that I journal is really stream of consciousness. Whatever is on my mind, I let it out in the morning and I let it out at night. And it's very, very important for emotional hygiene. I will also sometimes open this little tiny booklet that I have. It's not always the same book, but this is what I brought with me for traveling because it's small and compact. This is uh, Sri Daya Mata. It's based on Yogananda's guidance and it's called Intuition, Soul Guidance for Life's Decisions. I got this at the Self-Realization Fellowship in Malibu. So the morning time is really for projection, for giving gratitude and saying, this is how I hope today will go and this is what I hope will happen. And also this is what's on my mind. These are the dreams I've had. This is what I'm troubled with right now. And at night, it's more self-reflection. What did I do today? Is there something that bothered me that happened and can I write it about it to really release it? Um, I will often also do a few minutes of breath work of, you know, my, my <sighs> when I need it at night because I just feel like it releases 
everything right before I go to bed. If you need breath work, I have my own guided meditation. I'll link it down below. What I'm doing here is basically tapping into the power of ritual, which is very, very potent because human beings have been since since the dawn of time we've been performing rituals rituals for abundance for prosperity for luck you know alchemy by la is modeled after rituals and after sacred ancient ways and tapping into the power of ritual means using intention through movements and through movements that you do every single day it's super powerful it helps you to manifest super easily it helps you to just be a master manifester throughout your life I think that Aaron's taking so long, I actually have time to put in some extensions. We'll see. All right, I had time to put in hair. And Aaron is doing his first vlog today, uh, guys. I'm growing up all by myself. I'm so proud. You probably will see his vlog a little bit after. Yeah, quite, yeah maybe quite a bit after. Quite a bit after we're not in Mexico. Yeah. So, but please be on the lookout for that and support him because he's trying really I'm hard. I'm really trying hard to he be a really vlogger, is. not just a YouTuber. Oh. A vlogger is just a YouTuber. Okay, you're right, yeah. But I feel you. The YouTuber vlogger, though. He started his vlog saying... <laughs> what did I say? Oh, yeah. Welcome back. He's like, welcome back. We've been here in Tulum for one month already. <laughs> and I was like, we've been here for a week and a half. What? There's a panther right there. Aaron, there's a panther. Where? Right behind you. <laughs> Panthers in the jungle. You're not supposed to actually bike at night because panthers take you down, apparently. So that's a thing. Going to find the temple of the wind god. This is the wallpaper Aaron had on his iPad since 2012. And he didn't know where it was. An important characteristic of the Mayan villages of the East Coast was the construction of temples or houses near water sources, such as wells and chultuns. Chultuns, which is a type of cistern or altars inside caves. This building was a house that was built on the limestone, which then was extended with a room. So apparently the temple, when seen from above, is a circular shape, which is rare in Mayan culture. That sounds interesting to me because it sounds like an alien landing spot. Like with Peru, the Nazca lines mm -hmm. are seen from very, very, very high up, which would insinuate that there was some way that they could get really high up to yeah. the sea down. You ever seen those? No, I haven't. They don't look like anything. They're so big that they don't look like anything. But then when, but you, when you look from the top, yes. which means that thousands of years ago, somehow they had a way, either either like skyscrapers uh -huh. or some way of flying up, you know? Mm -hmm. Interesting. I wasn't sure if I would feel anything when I came here, but there's definitely some sort of magic here. You agree, babe? I do agree. 100%. It feels sacred and familiar. It's definitely familiar. Sure, that thing that I'll show you in a minute that's right over there is the same, I'll show you, it's actually on the beach up there, it's the same exact one that was on my iPad and I've always never knew why since my awakening in 2012 which was kind of symbolic for me um, it's been on my iPad. It's been the background and then I find out when she's like, oh, we should travel to Tulum for a month I'm like I find out that that is where the Mayans is like a Mayan re uh, ruins and um, Yeah, since I felt a calling ever since you mentioned it and then since coming here There's definitely an energy here for me being in Tulum in general has been like everything's just been at the right moment at the right time So much deja vu, deja vu. Um, and the way that I just because you know how people normally think past lives are like in the past Yeah, they're actually the way that I view it is parallel incarnation So there's a version of me right now that might be in my in time There's a version of Lior that also might be there We may have a, some type of life where we know each other there 
but in general, it exists right now, and if there's a connection to it, there's a purpose for it. Maybe it's to learn more, you know. I, uh, I had a very big, strong connection to 2012, believing like we were gonna ascend into a higher level of consciousness. And it's funny because the Mayans talked, their calendar ended in 2012. So I don't know if maybe part of me was picking up on that energy stream. I'm not sure. Um, but regardless, I feel a connection to the Mayan culture. And I've always felt a connection to this, even just the, I don't know if the Mayans spoke Spanish. Would you assume they spoke no, Spanish? They didn't. they didn't, okay. I've always felt they're a, pre Hispanic. I've always felt a connection to the to Spanish in general, mm -hmm. even though it's you know, they may have not spoken Spanish. But in general, or in, the, in anything you want to share about just I think the here more than anywhere else in Tulum. Mm-hmm. There's just kind of a feeling of familiarity. Yeah. I just feel like I do we do exist here in a parallel reality, yeah. honestly, which is the craziest thing to assert, but it's just a, a knowing. And I've been all over the world and I haven't felt that way in wow. many places except for Japan. Yeah. Japan, I felt that way. And here I felt that way. Anywhere else I've mentioned? I don't think, no. I've been everywhere. And yeah. I don't feel that way all the time. But here, it's like... You really feel it? Oh, strong. Yeah. Really strong. And if she says it, she really means yeah. it too. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I have a connection here, <laughs> a connection there. But she, she says she really maybe means it. Maybe you've been, maybe you just have a billion lives, For, you know? Yeah. It's possible. Who knows? And that's where you've acquired all your knowledge from. Think about it. Who knows? I do know that I felt the connection also in, in Maui. Yeah, you did. In Hawaii, I always feel a connection. Sometimes it's not its not always the most positive, too. Sometimes it brings up stuff. When yeah, I was he, in he Hawaii. Landed and we landed and he was just not happy. When we landed in Hawaii, I had a very weird... I just got, like, really down and couldn't get happy. It was the weirdest thing because I'm such a happy person. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, it was... Uh, I think that maybe there was a, a life, a parallel incarnation there where... I feel like there was a parallel incarnation with like a brother figure there that didn't go well or something. I forget why I thought that. I don't remember. Maybe yeah. like Victor? No, may, not, not Victor. I'm not sure. Anyways, the thing we wanted to share with you is that travel around the world, you have parallel incarnations that you may have had on different parts of the world. They're not past lives necessarily. They're par they exist parallel right lives. now. They're parallel lives. And yeah. you can tap into that energy. Right now. You can tap into the energy of different lives that you may be Their leading. Facial help. Mm -hmm. Anyways, you were gonna get going. I just wanted to share that, and we'll show you more here in a sec. So, mm -hmm. transition. <laughs> Weird feeling, and it's very similar to how I feel about be when I'm in Japan. It's almost like a yearning, a, a longing for a life that once was, you know, or that is, obviously, since time is an illusion and everything's happening all at the same time. So it's almost like my soul is like, yeah, this is where I I live somewhere in this universe, in this galaxy, and I miss it. And mm -hmm. and this is home. Yeah. Feels the same way in Kyoto and in Tokyo. Mayan gods were present in one or more elements of nature. Some were manifest in the astros or in atmospheric phenomena like rain, others in plants like the Seba, cotton silk tree, and animals like the jaguar. Each season of the year and each daily activity, such as the harvest, were marked by a ritual dedicated to a deity aimed at making sure human labor would be rewarded with optimum results. Thank you, kind animal. Um, Tulum was a city dedicated to the planet Venus, a de deity with a dual nature, that of the morning and the evening star. The descending god symbolized by the setting sun is closely related to Venus. And so it can be said that the evening star was worshipped at Tulum. Thus, the image of this deity is found on the facade of some of the buildings and its accesses are orientated to face the point where this planet sets. I read all that for you guys, by the way. Oh my okay, this is a this is like their authentic ginger ale. It is so bomb. Look at it, taste it. Paper straw. Oh wow. Yeah, it's phenomenal. 
Oh, that's really good for digestion, I can tell. Yeah. I really like it. Through my research, this is one of the more eco-friendly hotels, Sonara, I think it's called, and the real coconut aims to be. I couldn't find that much about it online. I talked to the manager when we were here last time and she did mention that they try to be as eco-friendly as possible. Um, the food here is grain-free. A lot of it is vegan, and um, but they do have fish and meat. Um, everything is dairy-free. They make their own coconut cheese, which is so, so good. And they have all these drinks. It's amazing. You like the taste of ginger. I love ginger. Me too. I'm getting I'll show you. I'll show you what we ordered. We got a bunch of food. I'll show you. Cool. Cool. Look at him. So far, it's our favorite place. It's an eco friendly place in, in Tulum. It's called the Real Coconut. We got really good food. Tim says the life's getting lost amongst the telephone lines. Is my Here are my coconut cheese tacos with some guacamole and pico de gallo. That's a vegan Caesar salad. It's actually delicious with some coconut chips on the top. That's my food. <laughs> but I ask, please don't land again. So I'll wind on my lonesome in my kennel like a whimpering dog. Fried avocado. Cause I can't sleep a second in the light. You're right. That is a lemon pie. I love lemon. If you know me, I love lemon. Lemon it's anything. Lemon pie. If you know me. Oh my love god. Lemon. He just said that. Sorry, so I just said the exact same thing. Aaron's so literally me. copying my Limon. Blog. Limon. Everything I'm doing, he's doing too. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Just wanted to, just wanted to check in for a minute and show you the food. But I forgot to show when I was eating because I was really hungry. Okay, and then we'll probably go down to the beach. just wrapped up his vlog he's already on vlog level expert because I never remember to I'm wrap an expert I never remember to wrap up my vlogs all my vlogs suddenly end it's like wow this dessert is so yummy so I'm gonna wrap it up but not just yet because there's more things I want to show okay cool well I'm gonna go get in the water okay that's okay. what I want to show you guys okay cool <laughs>